Welcome back divers, let's take a look at the new support weapons that were added in the most recent update. First up, we have the heavy machine gun, which looks to be unlocked somewhere around level 20, as it's just below the real gun and the spear. So it's either just below or at level 20 that you can get your hands on this weapon. It will run you 6,000 requisition, which is pretty easy to obtain, and if you don't already have it, it's pretty simple to get. Um, so that's pretty cheap. Next, the Quasar Cannon, just below the shield pack, looks to be the similar unlock level of around 20 or below as well, based just kind of where it's at, being below the shield pack. This one is going to run you 7,500 requisition to unlock. Both of these support weapons do not require a backpack to run, so that slot will be open when running either of these weapons. So let's get right into testing them. First up, let's dive into the heavy machine gun. This right off the bat doesn't have a reticle when in third person mode. So when you're running around, if you attempt to blind fire this, you are going to struggle to hit your mark pretty much at all with this weapon. Second, as far as the customization, this weapon does have three different rounds per minute options you can change to. I would recommend using the first at the 450 rounds per minute, as this is going to make the most for your ammo and allow you to be the most accurate as well. If you have a clear line of sight and the space to use the 1200 rounds per minute setting, you're going to be able to take out things quite a bit faster that way, but there will be a very aggressive recoil to manage, so it's not the best overall. This is going to be best on automatons, as you can take out all of the elite enemies as well as the cannon towers using this weapon. It will require some precision and burst firing to make it happen, especially at a distance. As for the bugs, this can't penetrate the armor on a charger directly. I'm sure you could hit the back of the legs at some point, as that seems to be weaker from time to time, or you can hit them in the butt area, but otherwise this won't actually do any heavy armor penetration on them, so there's no reason to use this against Bile Titans either, as it's just going to bounce off, and you won't get much use from it there. If the Bile Titan is weak, you can probably take it out by hitting the underbelly, but that really isn't going to be what this is useful for at all, and it'll be very risky to make that happen. So really, you're going to want to use this on some more of the smaller enemies and the medium armor penetration, like the hive guards and such like that, uh, as that's where you're going to see the most use out of this weapon. Little side note, you can take out the shrieker nest with this, but taking out one hive is going to take all of your ammunition pretty much. So I wouldn't really say this is worth the time. And you're also going to need some precision as if you're far away, which you really want to be with these to not attract any of the shriekers. It'll be best to kind of just avoid doing this. Uh, I'll be honest, it's slightly better than the original machine gun you get in terms of damage and the ability to have three different rounds per minute customizations for different situations, but if you weren't going to run a machine gun before this, it won't make you run one now. So it has two major downsides that I can see, the lack of heavy armor penetration, as well as no reticle in third person. Now, I didn't expect this to be an all-rounder weapon, but I also didn't really see the point in adding it either, as it's only slightly better as far as performance-wise to the original machine gun and you don't really get much out of it. So it has less ammo and more recoil, so those are two negatives. The two positives of this are it has slightly higher armor penetration, as well as the ability to benefit from the early reload like a primary weapon can, but otherwise I really can't see the point in bringing this over the other machine gun, as it just does what this can do but mostly better. This will all depend on your playstyle of course, machine guns were never something I was interested in running, so if you're a machine gun main, this could be a game changer for you, especially if you run the ammo support pack so you can have a long supply of ammo for this thing, so that could be very nice. But I would suggest using this for yourself and see if it's going to fit for you, but honestly I don't really see a reasonable use for this weapon overall, and I don't see a good point as to why it was added to the game in the first place. Like I said, the original machine gun seems to be better pretty much overall, so I don't really get the reasoning behind adding this to the game, especially because it can't actually do anything in terms of heavy armor penetration. The next support weapon is the Quasar. This is a launcher type laser weapon that doesn't act like a typical laser weapon. It still has the cooldown mechanic, but you can't build up a heat meter any faster or slower depending on the planet like you would with other laser type weapons. So no matter how you fire this, it's always going to have the one shot, then a cooldown. I don't believe that the planet will help this cooldown any faster as the description states that it only affects heat buildup from what I could tell. So you can use this the same in every environment. This weapon does have a three second ish wind up time before being able to shoot. Then it takes about 12 seconds for it to cool down before it can be shot again. This makes it pretty quick considering it doesn't ever run out of ammo. This weapon seems like a cross between the EAT-17 and the recoilless rifle. It has the benefit of fire and forget as you can shoot around and swap while it cools down. And then it also has the benefit of being able to one, have one weapon and not have to keep calling it back in. This also doesn't need a support backpack to continue loading which is incredible. The two downsides that it has though is the fact that you do need to charge it up before firing which is about 3 seconds so you will have to plan for that, as well as the 12 second cooldown after you've shot it. In my opinion, this is worth it over either of the other two launchers that were mentioned, as it's providing a convenience to me that outweighs the positive of the others. 
This weapon is going to be able to down a charger with one shot to the head, like the Recoil S and the E17. This does similarly well on Bile Titans most of the time. I was able to take a Bile Titan out with two shots, but this may be around three to four sometimes, depending on where you actually hit them. To get that two shot, it's the chin area that seems to be the best spot to aim for. If you aim for the forehead area just a little bit above that, it's going to be about three to four more often than not. Again, this may not always be the case, and your results may vary a bit depending on the difficulty you play, as well as your aim. This is the same as both the Recoilless and the Eat 17 in terms of damage, which is great. I usually just use a 500 kilogram bomb on Bile Titans most of the time anyways, but it's nice when those are on cooldown, and you can kind of use this as a bit of a backup. This can also take out a Shrieker Nest in about two shots, so if you have some spare time, you can take these out from a safe distance without having to expend any stratagems or risk your life by going near them. So for bugs, I would say this thing is a total win. On the flip side, for automatons, this does seem about the same as far as any other launcher aside from the spear. You can take out the hulks with two shots to the main body armor, or one if you can get a really accurate hit to their small head. It seems this also applies to tanks and cannon towers as well. Typically, it will be about an average of two shots to down those, assuming you hit them in the back or the ventilated area where it's glowing. I tried using it on the non-glowing area, and it seemed to have a different health pool, or it didn't do as much damage there, so I would definitely aim for the vents using this weapon. One thing that sucks is that you cannot penetrate the Heavy Devastator shield with this weapon, so you're going to need to hit their exposed right side if you want to take them out with this, which you could just use your primary weapon for anyways, so I would suggest that as it's most effective for those enemies. The Scout Walkers can get hit from the front plate with this as it's medium armor, so there's no block from them using this weapon, but again, if you have a Scorcher, you could just shoot the front plate, or if you're using a Slugger or something similar, you can hit the legs area and take them out that way as well. With this new update, I'll be honest, the heavy machine gun is not an important addition to the game, as there was weapons already that did similar things, and it just can't really outmatch those by a significant enough margin to be all that useful. The Quasar, on the other hand, was a great new support weapon to the game, in my opinion, as it does have benefits and downsides that I feel are a pretty good balance. I will definitely be using this launcher over most other support weapons from here on out, as I think it's a great addition. Let me know what you guys think of these two weapons in the comments, as well if they're something you are going to be bringing on your next dive. Thank you so much for sticking around for the video, and I will see you guys in the next one.